Hello, everybody. Welcome to another amazing episode of the Contractor Business Builder Podcast. We got the honor of posting Mark Poppin today. He is the owner founder of Funky Moose Digital. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to talking with you about marketing, how contractors can improve the marketing. I think this is a topic that you can just continue to improve. You know, I've been marketing for 20 plus years and it's just there's always new stuff and new ways of doing it. And I think it's a place where a lot of contractors don't put enough time and attention and focus because a lot of them don't like to do it. But uh, yeah. that's why they can hire someone like you. So can you yeah, tell us yeah. a little bit about your your company, the idea behind it and, and how you got started in, in digital marketing? Oh, boy. You want the long version? <laughs> I uh, lay it on us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm a web designer by trade. I started designing websites in the early 2000s, had a basically side business at that point. I, I was running a web design company between or next to my full time jobs at the time. Then I moved to Canada in 2007. So I had some time to think if I wanted to work for an agency or if I wanted to, to do the freelance thing. Looking around in my area, there were not a lot of free freelancers or web designers in general in my area. So uh, I started a web design company in uh, 2009. That went pretty well. But then I got recruited out of my own business by an IT company in a city nearby. They basically made me an offer I couldn't refuse, so to speak. <laughs> so I joined them for for four years. That was the place where I expanded my web design into more digital marketing and Google ads and Facebook ads, etc. And then yeah. in 2015, so that's a little bit of a step back. In 2015, I, I started an e-commerce store because I was building e-commerce stores for clients and yes. I knew how to build the site. I knew how to get traffic to it, but I wasn't sure what would happen after the order was placed. So I wanted to you know, learn firsthand how that works. So I started my own store, accidentally grew that to a six figure business. And that's when around that same time I was recruited by the IT company, worked there for about four years. After that, it was time for me to move on. The business was growing and whatever I was doing there, I could do for myself freelance. So I made that switch to focus on my own business in 2021. Primary focus at that point was e-commerce businesses because that's what I knew inside out. But uh, as you may know, e-commerce businesses are hard to find because mm -hmm. nobody advertises it as I run an e-commerce business. Maybe I'm, a, I'm the only one, but you know, if you run a business, you run a business. So it's really hard to find clientele there. And then I had a couple of contractors reach out to me saying that they wanted me to do their digital marketing. And uh, that was kind of a light bulb moment for me where I was like, you know what, these guys need a digital marketer like me. And um, that's kind of how that uh, that ball got rolling. Great story there. And, you know, inspired that you can take all that experience now over the years and, you know, focus on contractors and helping contractors because it is something just looking at like my clients, a lot of contractors don't enjoy doing and don't really know a lot about. They prefer to be out there managing their business and, you know, building houses or renovating places or whatever. And the marketing side of things just isn't isn't something that they, they want to do. That said, it is so critical to a business and like because it's something that not a lot of them like to do, I really see the effects long term of not getting enough leads into their pipeline not having enough jobs to bid on which usually kind of makes their pricing kind of lower because you know you want to get these jobs and keep the business running and stuff and there's yep. can't be as selective with leads and and just the the amount of attention that's coming into the business so mm -hmm. most tracks they've already started with digital marketing of some kind i mean in this day and age everyone's doing something yep. what would you say are some of like the fundamentals of like getting just the foundation of like a good digital marketing you know, advertising or, or digital marketing um, set up? Um, well, step one is always a website. Either having a website or something that you can build landing pages on is is critical because you can have all the ads you want, but if those ads don't direct anywhere, then the ad is kind of kind of useless. And I know Facebook has the direct form, the, uh, I forget what it's called now, but it's it's like a direct form. You click on the ad and you get a form and you get a message, but yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't help with the credibility of the business because all people see is that Facebook page, right? So yeah. with a website, you can expand on, on your business. Like if you have a Facebook page, Facebook page is 
just like all the other 500 million Facebook pages, but a website you can create and make your own. So that that would be yep. step one. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be flashy. Just have the core information about your business, have that on a website and yep. then create a landing page on there or make sure that your contact page has, you know, some basic info so that you have something that you can point your ads to and then step two once you have that website you need to make sure that the website is found in in search engines and the best way to do that is write content for it make sure that you have enough content for google and bing to figure out what you do yeah. and what your you know your uh, your core business is so to speak and then yeah. step three is ads google ads in my opinion, work best because people are already searching for your service. That's why they're on Google. Uh, yep. So they're more likely to convert than uh, Facebook ads. However, I do have clients that offer a service that is not something that you would think of first. So for example, one of my clients is a concrete lifter. If I walk on my back patio and I see an uneven slab of concrete, I'm not thinking I should get a concrete lifter in here. I, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should get this replaced. You know, so if if I were to go to my phone or my computer and, and look for something, I would go for like a concrete contractor, not necessarily mm -hmm. concrete lifter. So yeah. you have a Facebook, Facebook ad that goes out to more of the general public. It's, you know, less effective, but you do get that branding and you, get, you do get that name recognition. Um, yeah. So yeah, those are, I think I mentioned all of them. SEO or website, SEO content and Google and Facebook ads. Yeah. So website is kind of the hub base, the, you know, initial yep. step to get into place there, as you mentioned. And you also, you talked about, you know, having enough content for Google Bing for them to kind of dig into and dive into and, and stuff like that. What would be your advice as far as what type of content or how to create content? Obviously there's, you know, ChatGPT and all these things that make it easier, but how would you structure the content or what kind of content would you put on a website to optimize it? I always tell my clients, try to put yourself in the shoes of your ideal customer. What would you be looking for? And I know that's hard to do because you're very close to the business yourself. So, but you, you need to yeah. get out of that mindset as the business owner and go into, okay, I need, I don't know, my roof is broken. I need a roofer. What am I going to search for to hire the, the best roofer? So would my keyword be best roofer near me or something like that? Mm -hmm. When you know that, then you start creating your content around that keyword. So for example, if you are in Calgary, Canada and your company does roofing, so you want to write content around uh, roofing in Calgary. So you can touch on the harsh winters in, in Calgary. You can touch on, so for example, the uh, ice damming on, on roofs that's always damaging to a roof. So um, you can write content around that. It doesn't have to be super long, but usually keep it between 500 and 1,000 words. And then just build from there. You, you'll you share it on social media and you'll see what, what gets the interaction. And then just write more of what does well. That's yeah. that's very, that's, <laughs> that's all I do. <laughs> yeah. And do you, start, you have like a, blog, a separate blog page then on the website? or article page like to, to host this content or, or how do you? Yeah, in in most cases, yes. I've heard the rumors that Google is now putting less emphasis on blog articles, but to me, content is content. So it doesn't really matter where you put it uh, yeah. as long as Google can find it. So yeah. yeah, generally I would put it on a blog, but if if you know you're not going to keep up with it, then, and the same goes for social media. If you are not planning to keep up with it, it even looks worse if you have like, oh, the last either blog post or Facebook post was from four months ago. People are going to wonder, oh, are they still in business? So you got to either uh, keep it up yourself or hire someone to do it. Yeah. And plan it ahead of time. I mean, the more you can do yeah. batching, like for me, when I when I do my content, whether it's videos or uh, writing articles or, or posts, you know, I try to batch as many as I can. I'll sit yeah. down for an hour or two. 100%. Do a bunch and then if it's not something you want to do a lot of or you have someone else doing it who just wants to do it you know a couple hours a month or whatever you know just schedule one per week or one per month you know you can spread it out but the the big part i think is, is the consistency of it the articles are nice too because it kind of puts you in an authority kind of um area where people can maybe go to your website and they can see okay you know you've actually have content about ice damming or you know harsh winters or how mm -hmm. certain shingles will you know should you get the 
10 year or 20 year, 30 year or whatever. So uh, yeah, yeah, all that kind exactly. of stuff. Yeah. What are some common mistakes that you see contractors doing if you, with advertising or websites, what, what's some, some big ones that could pop up for you? Common mistakes. There are a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. But some, something that would stand out is, like I said, uh, start something and then not continue doing it. Like the whole social media thing, like I said, a blog post from eight months ago. Also not keeping up with listings. So for example, the your address on Bing says this, but you moved in the meantime, you forgot to update Bing. So Google says a different address. And then also, you know, uh, yellow pages and, and all mm -hmm. of those Yelp, whatever. They are lower on the ladder than Google and Bing, but you need to make sure that all of that is is and stays consistent because people still use those sites and they might get confused or end up at the wrong place. So you yeah. want to make sure that that's, I, I see that a lot where I was actually talking to an HVAC contractor the other day and he had me audit his website. Like, what do you think? I kind of looked at it and was like, wait, did you not move like a couple of weeks ago? He's like, yeah, well, your old address is still on here. Like, oh crap, I got I, I better change that, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. make sure everything is up to date. Mm -hmm. And I understand you're busy, you're up on a roof, you're up, up down in a crawl space, whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't want to deal with that, but that's why you hire people like me. Yeah, for sure. Get someone to, to help you out with it. As far as like strategy, let's say I've, you know, I've, I've got a website and I want to start put, I've been done digital ads before. I want to start, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month or whatever, put some ads out. What's the strategy that you have as far as getting a return on that investment and, and getting started with, with ads? What's what the process there? So I like to offer more of an all in one package. I don't, I mean, I do it, but I don't really like just selling ads because that's only one part of the puzzle, uh, yeah. but the strategy strategy is mostly, um, so write the ads, then get them to your website that website also has blog posts so that's the content where the seo but then also social media posts so you can use your blog posts pick those apart and create social social media posts out of that blog post so it's kind of a full all-round circle where we have one package for all of those services in one you spend a thousand to fifteen fifteen hundred dollars in in ad spend uh but then you also get the i mean it's not full seo so we're not doing well we can but not in this package we we can do yeah. backlinks for example but yeah so the strategy is basically write at least once a month a blog post then pick mm -hmm. that apart and take snippets out of that and put that on social media and add yeah. posts that are maybe not related to the to the blog posts, but uh, so that you have a consistent social media presence. So you start with ads, you do your blog posts and you do your social media. Those are the three things that all kind of support each other. And that's that's what we sell the most of. Yeah. Makes sense. And with the social media, like you're putting out content, obviously you need to grow your audience and reach more people. Is there anything that you do or any advice you have if let's say it's a newer contractor or maybe they just don't have a lot of people on social media that's actually seeing their stuff? How, how do you get more exposure in a, in a general sense, but also like on, on social media? Yeah, social media has, has gotten really tough lately. Uh, because everybody's asking for attention now. Um, so what we usually do, the, the content that we create is fairly generic because we're not in the business. So we can't write that one specific thing, that awesome thing that happened this morning, you know? So yeah. we always want either the contractor or, or staff member to have access to the Facebook and, uh, and Instagram pages. Uh, one of our contractors is, uh, is very active in the stories all the time. And that's where a lot of the traffic is coming from as well. It needs to be kind of like, we'll, we'll do the, the majority of the social media posting, but because they're pretty generic, it's not like it's going to be a huge spike all of a sudden now that you're posting and you get a lot of interaction, but you will see a steady uh, increase of, of traffic or followers uh, that way. And yep. then just use your, your personal profiles uh, in tandem where, you know, you personally invite people to like your pages and you can do that for staff members as well. And you, you, you tag people and yep. that's. I mean, the whole social media aspect of it is to interact with people. For sure. As as far as like the the advertising goes, what can contractors expect when they start putting out like Google ads and things like that? What like how do they receive the leads? How does that get optimized over time? What 
can you can you dive into that a little a bit there? Yeah. So it it, it kind of depends on what kind of systems they have in place already. So if they don't have systems, they need to talk to you. <laughs> yes. Um, but if they don't have systems, we can start with a simple email form. You know, mm -hmm. where ad is created, people click ad, go to website, read a little bit more, fill out form, and the form goes into your email inbox, and then from there. You can have those processes in place where you put them on a calendar and have the internal tools to to streamline your business. But then we also go on a weekly basis. We go, well, it's probably more, but a minimum of a weekly basis, we go into your account and see how they're doing. And if we see that an ad is underperforming, we create an A-B a test and just see if it's the copy or see if it's the the keywords that we attach to it so it's it's an always like it's always evolving and we're always open and transparent about it like okay well this one yeah. didn't work so we trashed it and you know we started yeah, something so. new and uh yeah it's it's on a weekly basis at minimum we're in your ad account to make sure that that everything is uh, up to snuff yeah. then uh we also do click tracking making sure that everything from the moment that someone sees an ad clicks an ad it gets tracked all the way to down to when the fill the form is filled out mm -hmm. um so that we can see are these ads actually performing because clicks is one thing but if they're not leading mm -hmm. to an actual lead then it's it's a useless click yeah. right so um mm -hmm. we do have the 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 tracking en enabled on all accounts and then it really depends on ad budget and the competition and what area you're in how many leads you're going to get out of that mm -hmm. but on average if you spend uh, let's say a thousand dollars you should be getting anywhere between five and 15 leads a week yeah which is a pretty substantial amount for for most contractors yep. Enough yep. to keep you, yep. keep you busy uh, yeah, exactly right on so can you walk us through a success story of a client that you've worked with and kind of you know where they were at and, and how you guys work together and and how the what the outcome was it's um i actually have two but i'll i'll i mentioned the the concrete the concrete lifting business he was actually he reached out to me because he was working with a company and he literally told me i don't know what i'm paying for and it was like well why are you paying him then <laughs> well i think he's running my ads I mean, okay show me the ads he says i, I don't know how to get to him I'm like what what do you Okay, so what's on your invoice? He said, I, I don't get an invoice. I just get billed my credit card. I'm like, dude, you need to change this right now, either with that guy or you move over to me, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. that's not good business. So um, he did see a couple of leads here and there, uh, but he was like, you know what? This is, I, I, I'm spending, well, I'm not going to disclose how much he was spending, but he was spending quite a bit of money and he was yeah. getting one lead or two leads a month. Yes. It's like, dude, that's not that's not worth it. You need to close them too. And there's a drop off rate in, involved too. So, mm -hmm. um, and he was like, okay, it sounds like you know what you're doing. Can you please help me? He's like, yeah. So I, I took over his website, um, took over the Facebook ads. So we do we do Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. um, and then I sent him some information yesterday. I don't have the, the sheet in front of me, but he was getting a lot more leads now. So in the last 30 days, instead of one to two, he got I think 17 leads. So, I mean, that's still on the low-ish end uh, for what what can what can be done, but compared to what he did before, it's, over, over it's 10 quite so. significant. Yeah, he can actually, mm -hmm. so it was going in a direction where he had to take a, a side job next to his business to keep the business afloat, but he hasn't been at that job for a while now. So, yeah. you know, that's mm -hmm. that's a win in my in my books. Definitely. No, that's, that's a great story and a good, wake up call for contractors out there and i have lots of clients as well where you know they've been working with them with an agency for a long time and it's you know the common kind of story is it'll pick up it takes time and yes some of that is true but ultimately if you've been working with someone for like some time and it's just like it's not effective and there isn't the roi then talk to someone else you know get a second opinion look at yep. you know if you're spending money and it's not coming back to you then you need to, to change things up because uh yeah you know, we're all in business to, to make money and, and do good work but uh, at the end of the day you've got to watch out for everybody else um like that you provide for with your business for sure uh yep, you mentioned you, you had another client as well you you want to talk about what yeah what was he was he was he was pretty much in the same scenario i knew him through what do you call it oh mutual friends i we yeah. had mutual friends and we we kind of mm -hmm. got to talk about it and and i explained exactly this situation to him he's like dude that's me i'm spending x amount of dollars and i don't know what i'm getting mm -hmm. and i'm like is this a common theme here what what's going on and um mm -hmm. yeah so for him the same mm -hmm. way i took over the website took over the ads 
uh, he mm -hmm. did Google Ads. I haven't looked at um, a before and after snapshot uh, in a while, uh, but he's doing a, a lot better now than than what he did before, yeah. um, including his website because his, his website was broken left and right, and we finished that, we fixed that up too. So it's um, yeah. yeah, he's a he's a happy yeah. camper now. I think it's easy sometimes as business owners and contractors. You know, you're so busy. Marketing is generally not a strong suit. You don't have a lot of experience or knowledge about it, and yeah. you don't always know what should be expected or what you know it's just kind of like someone's doing it so I, don't, I can forget about it but i think it's a good opportunity to maybe if you have if you know other business owners you know ask them about their marketing you know are you doing ads is yeah. it working for you what's you know learn from the other people around you and um, don't kind of be the lone wolf if you will yep, and it's, it's so easy to do that in business and and but uh, get out there you know network and reach out to people and i think um that's that's a big part of it and always be improving your skills often the difference between where someone Someone's at now and where they want to be is it's a skills gap. It's not you know going to be just marketing or just systems or I you know mm -hmm. just you know more money into the business. There's usually some sort of a skills gap that isn't being fulfilled by the people in the business or by the business owner of knowing what is good marketing, what is you know good sales technique, and, and often we just need yep. to kind of improve our skills in order to, to get to that next level. Um, I, do, I do I do want to add something to that though. Yeah. Like if you do go out and talk to other contractors, that's great. Do that. Mm -hmm. Don't ask for price though because mm -hmm. one contractor might get billed more than another depending on what your target audience is how much you're getting for it i've i've had it a few times where contracts came to me uh with how much is it gonna is it gonna cost i gave them a price they were like oh well so and so does it for so much i'm like okay yeah. that's fine but mm. are they getting results oh well i don't know well there you yeah. go we get results yeah it, <laughs> if, if if you spend a thousand dollars and you get two thousand out of it, how many times will you do that? Right? It's, That's it's right. that That's analogy. Right. If it's if it's a positive gain or the gain is, is high enough, then it's not how much you're spending; it's it's how much you're making at the end That's of the right. day. Right? Yep. It's not yep. the revenue; yep. it's the profit, <laughs> the, yep. re the return on the investment. A good thing that you've kind of touched on is like the analytics and tracking, and and you said you know you know from how many you know impressions you're getting of your ad and how many people are clicking through, and then you've got to eventually figure out how many people are calling you and how many are you actually doing estimates for and then you know hopefully you have like a good crm system where you can see you know your closing ratio and you should have a you can put all those numbers together anyways how can contractors get that information as you mentioned some marketing agencies maybe they they're not putting this in front of contractors so they don't really know can you talk a bit about the analytics and how to be looking at it and, and what's like how that information um, you um, you, yeah, you can get pretty technical when it comes to uh, things like that. It it comes down to if your ads are set up properly, then you should be able to see in your CRM where a lead came from. So we we help with with that setup. Now, of course, if you want a phone call directly to your phone, it's a little harder to track. There are ways around that with tools like Ring Central and and CallRail, for example. And you can even set up a, a dedicated phone line just just for your ads, for example. But yeah, as I said, if if the ads are set up properly, you should be able to see in your analytics, whether it's through your CRM or Google Analytics, you should be able to see where traffic comes from. Either that's organic through SEO or through ads on Facebook or, or Google yeah. uh, or your social media posts, everything should be tagged or at least somehow tracked. And uh, and we help we help our clients with that to make sure that you know we we and we show we show reports on a weekly basis. So uh, in that report, it shows well we spent this much money on this ad, and it, this ad resulted in this many calls or or. Yeah or clicks so yeah. yeah but but if you if you want to find out yourself it really depends on i i know contractors just want phone calls they don't i mean mm -hmm. yes they care but they don't really care how they just want mm -hmm. the phone to ring right and it, i think us as marketers are more technical when it comes to that we want to see where it comes from we want to see if things are working but in general contractors just want the phone to ring or get their in yeah. boxes filled with with leads mm -hmm. they don't care how <laughs> they want the result and but it's still important um to be thinking of it you know it's like yeah sometimes this black box you know of like yeah. marketing, marketing and then you know out, out the other end comes comes phone calls or, or leads or what have you but uh yeah. you know tracking that information and not the you know you can go down the rabbit hole as far as analytics and stuff like that but some of the key you know indicators and, and metrics are very important especially over time um you can 
see seasonality of, of weeds and, and, and things throughout years, as well as it gives you an understanding of if you want to grow your business by 50% or 100% in the next year or two, if you if cost per lead is, you know, you're spending $5 or $20 or $100, um, you know, for a lead and, you know, can you, you, you understand then what your marketing budget needs to be and to, it just, it gives you more yep. information to, to better manage and, and run your business for sure. So. Yep. If our listeners out there want to connect with you, what's the best way for, for them to get uh, connected with you? Well, uh, I'm I'm everywhere. <laughs> if you check out the yeah. website, funkymoosedigital.ca, that's where most of my stuff is. If you want to yep. connect with me personally, you can follow me on LinkedIn. Just search Mark Poppin. Don't Google it because there's a serial killer on, on there <laughs> with, with the same name. That's not, not me. Not the same guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, LinkedIn is probably a good way. Facebook yeah. too, just uh, it's not a very common name. But like I said, I'm not the serial sure. killer. <laughs> we'll, we'll put some links in the in the description. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you yeah. can just click through and 